This is our Understanding the Scriptures segment. We're in the book of Acts. We're in Acts chapter 17. And Dave, I think we got a little past verse 22, but I'd like to go back. Just um, mm-hmm. sets a little better context of what we're going to be mm-hmm. talking about. Uh, so this is Acts chapter 17, verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Well, Tom, uh, why would he say they're too superstitious. I mean, they've got a bunch of gods. Unknown God is just one more. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, um, Paul is pointing out it's a little bit ridiculous. How many gods are there? Uh, you know, there are, uh, well, I don't know if we should go into that. We'd probably just take a couple of minutes. There are basically, uh, well, there are a number of concepts of God. Pantheism, mm-hmm. you can forget about it. God is everything, therefore everything is God, therefore there's no God. I mean, there's no distinction between God and a bush. So God really isn't God. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything out there with a problem, and it's God, and God's got a problem. Right, exactly. And God is also a sinner. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sinners are God, too. But then we have Islam, which says Allah is a single entity. Now, we have people who call themselves Christians, Jesus-only people who mm-hmm. they deny the Trinity. Uh, they agree with Islam when they deny the Trinity because Islam, the Quran, says you believe in the Trinity, you go straight to hell. And uh, interestingly, that's one place where the Jews and the Muslims agree. They say Yahweh, Jehovah, he's a single entity as well. Okay, So both the Muslims and the Jews and the United Pentecostal Church and so forth, God is one, one, a single entity. Now, you have a basic problem. You have unity, but you have no diversity. That means that before God created any other beings, he couldn't experience love, fellowship, communion. He was all alone. Before he could love anyone, he had to create somebody else. But the Bible says the Father loves the Son and has committed all things into his hands. The Bible says God is love. Mm -hmm. But anyway, on the other end of the scale, you have what... You have the situation Paul was facing here in Athens. Mm -hmm. Polytheism. Many gods. Well, you have diversity, but you have no unity. Right. And for anyone who remembers their Greek-Roman mythology, these gods couldn't get along. I mean, they were always after each other. That's right. Stealing one another's wives, fighting wars, and, Mm -hmm. and so forth. So you have diversity, but you have no unity. There must be... Unity and diversity. Now, a philosopher would join in saying that. I mean, philosophically, uh, it's sound. Well, the Bible says there is unity and diversity. Unity in diversity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God. And, you know, we've been over it, I think, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, where it says, Hear, O Israel. Yahweh, our Elohim, is one Yahweh. And the Jews, this is called the Shema. This is what every Jew learns. See, there, God is one. He's a single individual. No, the word for one there is Echad. It means a unity. And you would get that, I think, the first time we get it in the Bible is in Genesis 2.24, mm-hmm. where God created Eve out of Adam's rib. He brought them together, and it says the two became one, one flesh, Echad. Or you have it, I mean, in, in a number of other places. Here's a, here's a bunch of soldiers. They joined together. They became Ichad, one troop. Okay, so Ichad is a unity. So what God is saying is, here, O Israel, Yahweh, that's I am that I am. Our Elohim, that's a plural form of, of Hebrew that means at least three. Uh, Yahweh, our Elohim, is one, Ichad, is a unity, one Yahweh. Okay, so these people are too superstitious because they don't even have the right God. They've got gods that fight one another, and now they think, well, who knows, there might be another one. Well, well, let's worship him. Let's have an altar to him too. Hey, guys, you're overdoing it. Um, let me declare 
the God you don't know to mm-hmm. you. And he does. Verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Uh, Tom, that's, uh, I mean, too much for us to talk about briefly, but you've got an awful lot there. Mm -hmm. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands. He doesn't need anything from us. Uh, he, He doesn't need anything, Paul says. But what is the basis of religion? Tom, everywhere. You were raised a Catholic. Dave, these verses just jump right out at me. Uh, We had God in a tabernacle and then God in a piece of bread and then God to be worshipped within a monstrance. But how did you worship him? Good deeds. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many commandments are there? And and you you bring your gifts and and so forth. Uh, And, of course, if you were into Hinduism, they they bring food mm-hmm. uh, for the gods mm-hmm. uh, to eat, and these people did the same. Right. They, we, but you see that this this host right. in which supposedly the mm-hmm. priests transubstantiated right. the body and blood, soul and divinity of right. Jesus Christ. That's that bread. That's bread made with hands. So obviously a direct contradiction to the scripture. Well, but here. they say it's a miracle. You see, and and uh, but it's but, still made but, with hands. But, <laughs> but, but Tom, we have a problem because. Uh, how many millions of these pieces of bread would there be on display at the same time in Catholic churches around the world? Each one of them is Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. whole and entire, soul and spirit, divinity, and so forth. Now, that is... I mean, no, it's mystagogy, Dave. It's, yeah. it's mystery, that we were told. Right, right. Anyway, Paul is just laying it out. It's very simple. Look, if God made the heavens and the earth... Mm-hmm. And they're not even sure about that, which God made the heavens and the earth. But it, this is the only way it can be. You can't look at the universe around you and see the marvels of the universe. It didn't create itself. Uh, I mean, it, a child can look up at the sky and say, hey, the sun couldn't have been there forever because it's just a giant fire. I don't care how big a fire is, it, it will burn out someday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the same is true of all the stars. So they couldn't have been there forever. Forever is a long time. No matter how big the fire is, before forever comes, it will have burned out. So you know that the universe hasn't always been here. It, it didn't just happen out of thin air. It didn't just create itself. So Paul is just saying, everybody knows the God who made the heavens and the earth, okay? That's who God is, uh, well, he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. He's not worshipped with men's hands. He doesn't need anything from us. But you think that you're going to gain points with God. And, and in, in case that's not the real God, then you've got another God. And well, well, let's give him a little little service and, and, and so forth. And you're trying to appease all these gods with your works. The Bible, well, you know, Tom, we've been over it a number of times, but it pays to go over it again. Remember in Romans 3... Uh, Paul argues it very clearly. He says, by the deeds of the law, no flesh can be justified. You, if you've broken the law, you can't say to the judge, well, if you let me off this time, I promise you, Scout's honor, I'll never break the law again. The judge says, if you never break the law again, you're only doing what the law requires. You don't get extra credit for that. Now, what do we do about the fact you already broke the law? So Paul says, you can't justify yourself by keeping the law, by doing good deeds. And this God, he doesn't need anything from you. What are you, what are you going to give the creator of the universe? What could you possibly give him that he needs so that in, in return, he will give you forgiveness or whatever? So you cannot fault the logic of, mm-hmm. of, of Paul here. And he's reasoning with them. Uh, and then he goes on and he's going to talk about This is an amazing verse, Tom, verse 26. He has made of one blood all nations of men. For more information about the Berean call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 